The Republican formed House subcommittee investigating the so-called weaponization of the federal government held its second hearing yesterday on what has become known as the Twitter files. On Capitol Hill, Republicans brought in a pair of journalists to testify who had been handpicked by Twitter CEO Elon Musk to report on the alleged anti-conservative bias he claims the company operated under before he took over. It comes as House Republican leaders continue to accuse tech companies of trying to censor right-wing voices, even when there's evidence that often suggests otherwise. Things became tense yesterday between the top lawmakers on the panel, Republican Chairman Jim Jordan and ranking Democrat Stacey Plaskett. Take a look. Frankly, I think they're brave individuals for being willing to come after they've been named in a letter from the Biden FTC. Is this your question time now? No, I'm responding to your ridiculous oh. statements you made in your in your opening statement. Okay, well, let's get on with it. Oh, now we want to get on with it. So you I can did. say all the things you want. And I, point I did out in my facts. opening statement as well as you had an opening statement. The ranking member of the Committee on the Weaponization of Government is asking for your sources. If I never asked raise... them for their sources. Yes, you I did, did not we... ask for sources. You know I asked the if they were talking not, to the Elon Musk. Not, not and they said that they were not talking. Well, you are not well, going to say I will I've yield asked back for to, sources. I will, I will uh, yield back to the gentlelady. I thank her for yielding. With respect, you asked me who gave me I asked you who gave it to you. And when she said that they were your sources, I then asked you if you had spoken with Elon Musk. I did not ask you who those sources were. General, the gentlelady the from record, Wyoming the is recognized. Correct. Joining us now, Democratic Congressman John Garamendi of California. He is a member of that select weaponization committee. Well, Congressman, uh, that was just one heated moment. There was a, a long line of questioning, though, on other areas as well. Take us inside that room, what you saw yesterday, and then a step back, if you could, about what you believe is the objective. What is the point of this committee to begin with? Well, first of all, this is pure Jim Jordan. His history in Congress is precisely what we saw in this. It's attack, it's a bunch of uh, missteps, and frankly, unprepared testimony. Uh, so he's out, you know, the louder he gets, the worse he is. And so that's what you saw. The bottom line of this is that uh, he struck out. His committee struck out for the second time. The first hearing didn't work for him. This hearing didn't work. He's trying somehow to prove that there was some conspiracy, and he's deep into conspiracy theories, that the uh, Biden administration was trying to censor uh, the, uh, the company. The fact of the matter is the company in 2020, 2022, undertook significant studies to try to figure out if their algorithm was somehow biased. It turns out that indeed it is biased. It promotes conservative thoughts. These are studies done by universities. Millions of files were looked at. And the result of it is, yeah, the company is biased towards conservative thought. And so that needs to be addressed, I suppose, by Twitter. I don't know what Musk is up to. There's been a long story on him. The fact of the matter is that there is a censorship issue in America, and it is the Republican governors who are censoring thought. They're censoring American history. Uh, they're, they're, they're basically banning books that talk about slavery, that talk about LGBT, and not allowing schools, high schools and others, to even discuss those issues. So the term weaponization has kind of become a catch-all for Jim Jordan and some other House Republicans. Yesterday, the subject was Twitter and whether or not it censors certain voices. Democrats, you all presented some examples on the other side of that, as you just said, of Democrats being censored. But what else is this committee looking at? How long will this go on? Well, this will go on. Uh, well, the history of Jim Jordan, take a look at what was going on in the Benghazi hearings. It went on for two years, specifically for the purpose of using a federal weapon, in this case, the Congress of the United States, which is the federal government, as a weapon back then to take on uh, Hillary Clinton and now to take on the Biden administration. He is using the federal government the Congress of the United States as a weapon to attempt to somehow harm the Biden administration. Now, there are plenty of things that we need to do. We've got a new budget that's presented to the Congress. The Republicans are not dealing with that. Part of that budget deals with the judiciary system. 
So let's investigate that. Let's have hearings about how the invest, how the judiciary system, specifically the Department of Justice, was used by the Trump administration for four years as a weapon to both attack and to defend Donald Trump, to attack others and then to defend Donald Trump. Now, there's something legitimate to, to investigate. Yeah, this is going to go on for some time is the bottom line of on all this. On a different yeah. topic, Congressman, you sit on the Transportation and Infrastructure right. Committee. Wanted to get your take on Norfolk Southern CEO Alan Shaw testifying yesterday over in the Senate on the Committee there on Environment and Public Works and apologizing to the residents of East Palestine, Ohio and surrounding communities following last month's train derailment and toxic chemical spill. Hours before that hearing, another Norfolk Southern train derailed, this time in Calhoun County, Alabama. But 30 cars derailed that time. There were no reports of injuries or of a hazardous leak. So, Congressman, as a senior member of the Transportation Infrastructure Committee, served on the rail subcommittee for eight years, and have said East Palestine really is an issue of national concern. What did you make of yesterday's hearing, and what do you hope comes out of all this in terms of rail safety? Well, first of all, the CEO reminded me of a young kindergarten kid that uh, has been reprimanded. He said, well, I'm so sorry, but then continues to misbehave. The fact of the matter is Norfolk Southern and other rail lines have seriously misbehaved for a long, long time. We were carrying legislation nearly a decade ago trying to force the rail companies to do the proper thing in the transportation of, of petroleum products, uh, and it's they didn't. Uh, so what we need to do here is to pass some very serious legislation. Uh, when Norfolk Southern has a, a profit of $4.8 billion in 2022 and then spends $4.7 billion buying back stock, they obviously didn't spend the money on their tracks. They didn't spend the money on the rail cars to make sure that they're safe. They didn't spend the money on improving safety all up and down the entire line. So we need to force the rail companies to spend the money where it creates safety. Uh, electronic brakes. Northwick Southern started that, decided that they didn't want to spend the money on electronic brakes, which can stop a train in perhaps half the distance. No, they'd rather spend the money on buying back stocks, bolstering their stock price, so the CEO could have even more money. The CEO didn't commit to any specific changes at this point. He didn't want to do that inside that hearing room. We'll see if he does take that step. Democratic Congressman John Garamendi of California, thanks for your time this morning. We appreciate it.